gentlemen. Thank you for coming our presentation. It's first day and we are first presenters. My name is Yuki. These are my co-presenters, Masako and Sayaka. Our presentation is about Japanese language. When we use Japanese when we use language, we okay. speak it Next. and hear it to communicate each other. However, Japanese people use hidden meanings. Maybe good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can up the stair. And maybe you can up and down up the stair. Through actions, names, okay, I will and speak. spoken words. It's okay. Please enjoy mysterious Japanese language. First presenter is Today, Ka is Yuki. Please think and tell you up and talk you about and tell you about. Thank you, Masako. I'm Yuki. Since I came here, and tell you about I noticed topic. that there was start from a big, big differences <laughs> between Americans and Thank Japanese you know. non-verbal communication. Good evening. And also, each country, each country values affect their conversation you, style. Good evening. So today, I'd like you to talk about comparison with Japanese and evening. American non-verbal communication. By, throwing, you, by following eye contact, evening. bowing, and silence. Topic is making Let's fun. begin by my first point. First eye contact. I have to like to define the term. Epoch. Making eye contact Epoch is means significant in the U.S. Epoch means a period of um, importance. For example, a mama so says to her children, "Look at me when I am speaking." Different. <laughs> Different. On the other hand, Japanese tend to tend to look down Epoch and avoid making eye contact because. By the way, do you know? In Edo period, 1600 and to 1867, there was a stratified society in Japan. So, commoners couldn't make eye contact to warriors, samurai. That's why commoner had to look down to avoid making eye contact. Otherwise, it showed rude. Look at this, look at this picture. Can you see a people who are kneeling and who are kneeling and looking down? That exactly shows what I said. This system finished with Edo period, but still now Thank you for coming. still now the idea a idea influence uh, continue to influence Jap Japanese today's society. So therefore, some Japanese sometimes avoid, look, uh, don't make eye contact, but it shows not pay attention, but it shows respect to others. Let's move on to the next point, bowing. A bow is a meaningful action for Japanese people to show respect and to, to gratitude to others. And Japan, in, in addition to that, Japanese doesn't have a custom of shaking hands as a Western. But instead of that, Japanese bow, bow each other at the beginning and the ending of, ending of minute, meeting. So there are three different degrees of bowing. Could you distinguish the meaning of different degree? First of all, casual bowing is eshaku, 15 degrees of bow. It is used by passing up people who know each other like this. Hello. And also, it is by going in front of a person. Excuse me. How much is the mirai? How much does mirai cost? Next. The most common degrees of bow is 30 degrees. It is called keirai. It is used for business situation 
and also welcome customers. In Japan, usually when a, when a customer enters the store, employee said, "Irashimase." It is, it means welcome. So I will demonstrate. A, a, a customer enters the store. Hi. Irashimase. So in this case, it is used for 30 degrees of bow, k day. Finally, most polite bowing is 45 degrees of bow. It is called saikei It shows gratitude, apology, and make a request, as, make a request of someone. So the deeper the bow, the more show the show, the deeper the bow, the more show the more respect it shows. Finally, silence has a different meaning between the U.S. and Japan. The, the conversation style of the American is said to be a basketball style, as if they are catching, they are passing, passing a basketball style, passing a basketball. In, in uh, sorry, <laughs> excuse me. In my host, host family case, their conversation style is rugby style. Like I'm talking more. <laughs> there are a lot of arguing and then more talking, discussion, discussion, and then I couldn't enter the conversation. <laughs> anyway, on the other hand, Japanese conversation style is said to be a bowling style because Japanese tend to wait my turn to speak, to talk. So the so when a person talking, we have to wait and we have to, we have to be quiet. So, in because of this style, sometimes Americans believe that Japanese is quiet and shy. But it is it is false. So waiting. So when a person waiting. Waiting my turn to speak, silence happens. Silence occurs. So silence doesn't. Silence shows. Silence doesn't show shyness, but silence shows respect to others and pride to respect to others and politeness. In summary. Non-verbal communication conveys a lot of messages and Japanese actions based on respect, hum humility, and politeness. And the meaning of non-verbal communication is different from, different from the US and Japan. Thank you for listening. The next presenter is Masako. She will talk about fascinating kanji. Thank you, Yuki. Good evening. I'm Masako. Today, I'd like to talk about Japanese names through the explanation about kanji. Do you know kanji? No? Yes? In Japan, there are three ways of writing. Kanji is one of the ways of writing Japanese. Extension student in, in most cases, Japanese people have kanji characters in their names. And Japanese people have hidden meanings in their names. And it can be made by using kanji. Today, I'd like, to, today I'd like you to know about it. As I said, in Japan, there are three ways of writing. They are hiragana, katakana, and kanji. When Japanese people write something, they use these three types of writing. Today, I will focus on kanji, and I have three, uh, three main points about kanji. First, I will talk about what is kanji. And next, I will talk about the structure of kanji. Finally, I will talk about Japanese names. Let's begin by talking about what kanji is. 
kanji is a written system from China in the 5th century to 6th century. In Japan, there are a lot of kanji, but usually we learn 2,136 kanji through the school education. These kanji are used in publication, so it's necessary to learn these kanji. Kanji and kanji is used mainly for verbs, adjectives, and nouns. And kanji is not a formal verb, so most cases kanji has two or more ways of reading. And many kanji has same ways of reading, so even if each kanji has different meanings. Look at this sentence, please. Niwa, 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 niwa torigairu. As you can see, there are the same sounds in this sentence. It's niwa. However, this niwa can be represented by different ways, and they all have different meanings. So what does niwa, 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 niwa torigairu mean? This first niwa means yard. And this second niwa means in. Usually in Japanese, prepositions are represented by hiragana. And this, ni this niwa means to. And this niwa means hen. So it means there are two, two hands in a yard. In Japan, there are a lot of kanji which have same, same sounds but different meanings. So, if the kanji is different, the meaning is completely different. So, to recognize the different meanings, kanji is very important. Next, let's move on to the structure of kanji. Kanji has its own meaning. So, usually, Japanese people can recognize the meaning of kanji at first glance. And kanji can be divided into six groups by their shapes or structures. Today, I will focus on one of them. Please look at uh, some kanji has a structure which has specific meaning. Please look at kan this kanji. This shape means water. So if the kanji has this shape, it's related to the water. This kanji means ocean. And these kanji are related to water. Next, please look at this kanji. This shape means hand. So if the kanji has this structure, uh, uh, it's related to hand. And this kanji means finger. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry. This kanji means finger. And these kanji are related to hand. Finally, I will talk about Japanese names. And today, I will focus on given names. In most cases, Japanese people have kanji characters in their given names. Also, there are a lot of cases to consider about children's names. Many parents focus on specific kanji. And as I explained, each kanji has its own meaning. So, um, the combination of combination of characters creates another meaning. So when parents decide their children's names, they really consider about meanings and they choose certain kanji characters. And Japanese can, uh, Japanese can feel what the parents wanted their children to become like when see their name, when see their, eh, then, sorry, then when, when they see their names. For example, this kanji means beautiful, and it's popular for girls. We can guess her parents hope she will be beautiful. And this kanji is popular for boys, and it means brave. So we can guess his parents hope he will be a brave person. Also in Japan, many people believe in seimei handan. Seime means names, and handan means judgment. Seime handan is one of the fortune-telling since ancient times. 
All kanji has specific number of the brush strokes. Um, Same Honda is related to the total number of the brush strokes to create Japanese names. So people think the number influence a child's future. So when parents, when, when parents decide the kanji for their children, they, they research this number because there are good numbers and bad numbers. We can research it with books or visit a person who knows well about Seimei Hanba. But recently, we can research it on the website. And this number is my total number of my names. In conclusion, each kanji has its own meaning. So Japanese names can be represented, uh, can be created deeply by using kanji. And Japanese names have a strong relationship with kanji. All, kan all the names are first gift from our parents. And this is my name. Uh, if you have Japanese friends, it's very interesting to ask they are to ask them about their meaning of names. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Next presenter is Soyo. She will, she will explain about the power of words. <coughs> Thank you, Masako. Today, I will explain about the power of words. Have you ever, ex have you ever thought about the power of words. <laughs> the power of words connect people and language strongly. Since people know the language, is language connected. The power of words is very strong. So, um, uh, sorry. Since Japanese people believe. The power of words is very strong, so people care about what they say. And nevertheless, language <laughs> control people's action and feeling. <laughs> I have two main topics. One of them is how Japanese thought, how Japanese think about their language. Second is how Japanese language control the people. First, I will explain about what Japanese language is for Japanese people. One of the famous Japanese dictionaries, Kojian, says, Asian people think every word have a soul, and the soul leads to the same phenomenon as the word. The soul is called kotodama. If you say, I can do it, you can do it, because your word kotodama will lead to good future. However, if you say, I cannot do it, you will fail because your word leads to bad situation. Today, Japanese culture is well developed. However, Japanese people still believe in kotodama. Taboo words show the belief of kotodama very well. Japanese students study a lot because they have very big tests to enter a university. They practice, practice, practice every day and learn, uh, learn tons of information. So they believe we can pass our tests. So they try not to use these I can do taboo it. words, I can do it. I can do it. ochiru and suberu. Ochiru means drop. Suberu means sleep. These words have one more common meaning. That is to fail test. Even if someone almost sleep on the snow, we don't say ochiru 
and Sibelle. Good evening. I'm Yoko. We can see taboos not only at school but also on wedding days. During wedding speech, it's rude to say the words with double sounds. Double sounds have the same have the same two mean two sounds. For example, kasane, kasane, kaesu, kaesu. These words have the same sound. Double stands for twice. So Japanese people think pronouncing double means groom and bride will twice will marry twice to another person. <laughs> so if you if if you say with uh, the words with double sounds, groom and bride would say with anger, "We want divorce." Next, I will explain about how Japanese language control people. Japanese position word shows control the control very well. Japanese words, Japanese position words, that is like teacher or mother, father, like that, and position words change people's impression and attitudes. When I talk about to change impression, as Japanese people hear a word, hear a position word, the, they will guess the, character, uh, the person's character with only one word. For example, if the person is the oldest brother, they will guess he is tolerant or to be, he is sensible. I have a Not only uh, uh, Japanese language change people's impression, but also Japanese language change people's attitude. Japanese language have some sound, uh, some words, senpai and kohai. These words are used in many places like firms and schools. Senpai is used to call people who are older or have more experienced than oneself. Kohai, kohai is opposite meaning of senpai. Between senpai and kohai, they, they take different attitudes each other. Senpai can give instruction to do chores, like clean a room. And senpai, senpai to keep dignity, senpai is not willing to consult anything to kohai. On the other hand, on kohai position, some people said kohai have to use polite words to show their respect. So senpai and kohai take different attitudes each other. Japanese words change Japan, uh, people's impression and attitude. In conclusion, Japanese people believe the power of words, so people choose words carefully. And at the, at the same time, Language change people's impression and attitude. Thank you. In, in conclusion, there are a lot of hidden meanings in Japanese, com in Japanese communication. Unconsciously, from their actions, kanji, and spoken words, there is a hidden meanings. Thank you for listening.
Does anyone have a question? Mm -hmm. Yes. Excuse me, could you say that again? Uh, you said that Yuki, a boy's yes. name, means brave. Yes. And Yuki, a girl's name, uh, what does that mean? Um, the question is, the you, hmm? what does Yuki mean for girls? Yes. Um, um, in Japan, there are a lot of kanji, and each kanji has different meaning even if the sound is the same. So, for example, in my case, uh, my, my parents gave name my, uh, my name Yuki, but I asked my parents, what does it mean? Why did you choose this name Yuki? And they said, uh, we want you to be, have a confidence to be brave. brave. So she explained, um, you, Yuki is a common, common name for boys, but also, um, as, yes, so for girls, it's also common name, popular name. Yes, we can choose kanji and change the kanji, by change the kanji, the image is changed. So we can, mm, we can use, we can use, use a lot of kanji, kanji characters. Yes. Thank you. Any other question? Yes. Uh, do you feel like people were rude to you in the United States because of our different way of talking? Um, no. The question is, did I feel the did I feel uh, did I feel rude when the because of, of different American style conversation and com communication style? Actually not, because I I am in the U.S. and I I learned a different culture um, since I came here. So I I naturally uh, naturally accept different culture. So I didn't feel rude. Yes, it's famous Yuki. But sometimes. They are different culture, so we are surprised at American style, but we can accept uh, everything, <laughs> new cultures. <laughs> yeah. Any other question? Thank you for listening.